Okay, now it's recording. Go ahead. Okay, great. So we're going to start off here with some of our Metasploit challenges, and we'll start off with 310, which is uh, Metasploit versus Active MQ. So back on our cloud machines, uh, we're going to be using both the Linux machine and the uh, we're going to be using both the Linux machine and the Windows machine that we previously prepared. So uh, hopefully. Um, you were following along and you've already turned off, gone ahead and turned off all of the uh, firewall protections here. If not, let's go in here and just make sure that they're turned off. I've been turning mine on and off to demonstrate to people. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that it's turned off as you should too. Otherwise this stuff isn't gonna work so hot. So yeah, so I've got uh, I've got mine on for part of it, but I've got I've got it off for public and private, so that's good. Um, and then uh, the other thing we need to, there may be a couple other things we'll need to turn off, but hopefully as long as you've got uh, data execution prevention turned off and firewall turned off, we should be good for um, we should be good for this section. So, continuing on, the next thing we're going to do is make sure that we have Java installed on this machine. So, go ahead and open up uh, Firefox, which you hopefully installed yesterday. Once you've got Firefox open, just go to Java. Dot com. Oops. Super laggy. And when you're there, go ahead and uh, click this red Java download button. I'm not going to click it because I've already installed it on this computer. But you'll download it and then you'll install it just as you would any other application. I'm going to give you a second to do that. After you've installed Java, we're going to want to install ActiveMQ. So visit this address right here, ActiveMQ at apache.org, and we're going to download this uh, 511 re release. So that should take you just to the right place. You should be able to download it from here. Again, I've already downloaded mine. So I am going to give you a second to download that off the link. And then once you download it, you'll have a compressed file inside your downloads folder. If things are going according to plan. You'll have a uh, compressed file like so. And what you're gonna wanna do is right click on that file and then go to where it says extract all and click extract all. Once you've completed that operation, the extracted file will open up inside your downloads folder with everything inside it just as we wanted. These are very small, so it doesn't take very long to download and install them. Okay, once you've reached that point, let's go ahead and open a command prompt. Again, if you're not familiar with, too familiar with Windows, you can do that just by typing CMD in the command prompt window, in the search window. We'll say yes, we do want it to allow that. I just did that because I ran it as administrator out of habit. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is change directory to the place where we've installed 
that software. Copy, let's try that again. Oh, that's because it's in our downloads folder. Oh, that's because we're still in our Windows file. There we go. That's what we were. That's what we were trying to get to. So now we've navigated to our downloads folder, and we should be able to CD into that ActiveMQ folder now. Make sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Just missing the binary extension. Okay, so we I just had to add that in on the end. And we should be in there. So now let's go ahead and start her up. We're gonna type in backslash and then active MQ. And start it. Oh, does not like that. Just give us the business. We're going to have to get into this one more subdirectory here. Really? <laughs> Try running that again. Okay, good. So uh, this is good. It's starting up as we wanted it to get our uh, vulnerable software running. This is good. It looks like it's giving you errors, but it's not really, it's doing exactly what we want it to. Now, let's go ahead and hop back over into our uh, Linux machine. So first thing you're, we're going to want to do, now I've already installed it on this machine, so um, I am going to uh, forego that step with you. But what you're going to want to do is copy this line right here, this big long line, and we are going to download Metasploit into our uh, Linux machine. So you'll just go ahead and plug that in right here. Uh, it'll download, obviously, it went quickly for me since I already had it. Um, and then you will need to set the permissions on the install file. So we're gonna set uh, Chmode755. So you'll enter that. And then finally, you'll run sudo dot slash msf install in the window there. And then once you run that, all these uh, all the packages will install properly. Now, you should already have nmap installed from what we were doing earlier. If you don't have nmap installed, please run this command and enter a yes so that the packages install. Once it comes through, 
everything will be installed and you'll see this. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is grab the IP address of our Windows vulnerable machine. So let's open another command prompt window. Now, why don't we go ahead and figure out what our IP address is? Okay, so on this machine, our IP feed for address is 10.128.0.2. So we are going to go back over to our Linux machine, taking that address, and we're going to run an Nmap scan. So we're going to type sudo map. We're going to enter some flags here. And then we're going to enter our IP address. Oh, no, that's not what we wanted. The copy paste error. So let's just type it in. It's going to be 10. Okay, and then we will hit enter, and it's starting our Nmap scan for us. I want to wait for that to complete. Shouldn't take very long. But it is taking a little longer than usual. Just make sure everything's turned off on the firewall. Double check that. Should be off. Okay, good. Looks like it's still off. Go ahead and close out of there. List to that out a little way. Oh, my connection's very laggy, which is frustrating. Probably got too many connections open. Okay, so our Nmap scan is completed here, and we can see we've got a variety of things running on here. Now, one that we want you to see, one that we want you to see isn't showing up here, of course. So let's try doing this again. That is a little strange. It's very strange. Zero dot two. Let's try running this one more time because we're not getting the results that we want to see. Did we add a port number to the last time? No. We did not neglect to add a port number. Definitely did all of that. Oh, we did, we did, sorry. So one thing I did here that was incorrect was I neglected to add a port number. Uh, we're gonna need to add in this port flag for port 8161 to get the results we're looking for. 
because we know this vulnerable service should be running on that port. So I'm going to type uh, the P flag and then I'm going to type 8161 space. Then we have the IP address of our Windows machine and then I'm going to push enter. And as you can see, that scan completed much more quickly because it was only looking at one port. However, it should not be filtered. <laughs> it should just go ahead and show uh, open with our, uh, with our uh, vulnerable Apache. So let's go ahead and take a quick look there and see why that's happening. Firewall's off, so that should be good. Um, both of these are off, so that should be okay. Um, let's look at, make sure everything's, oh, we do, we did miss some of it. Okay, so that's oftentimes, that will be what's causing the issue. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Let's just take it, make sure that it's completely off. Okay, that should solve our problem. Let's go back and try this one more time. Mm. Oh, it won't, I, I keep forgetting, Windows won't actually uh, change the, uh, it won't actually change until we uh, go ahead and you know this happened to a student last time because the machine was a minimal machine it has to have at least two cores yeah mine's no it's not that it's that my internet's real slow i have i bumped the resourcing up okay it's, it's just my my internet is just terrible today and i was connected to a uh while we were on break i was connected to a cloud another a different uh cloud server an exsi server that i left some stuff open to so um let's try this again and i'm actually going to rerun this and we will see if this helps us out some it should. So let's go ahead and should not have closed out of there because I'm going to have to go back into I am just striking out on demos today. Okay, so that's okay. It happens to all of us. Why are we in this strange? Oh, that's right, because I did not run this one as an administrator. This one more time. Okay. Sorry, that small.
let's grab the start command again. Start that batch file, which is going to be ActiveMQ start. Okay, so now we've restarted our server. Let's try running MF against it once again. And see if that port comes up as open. There's always a good amount of debugging involved in these things. Great. So this time, the port showed up as open, which is just what we were looking for. So we know that this is going to probably be a pretty solid attack vector. OK. So now that we're back on track, let's go down here and start up Metasploit. So the way that you're going to want to do that is to use this command right here. So once we go back into our Linux machine, let's go ahead and type in MSF console dash Q. And it'll go ahead and start up for us. Eventually, it'll start up for us, I promise. There we go. So now you can see we have a shell prompt. So since we know that our uh, attack target is running ActiveMQ, let's go ahead and search for an exploit. Cool. So we get some results. This last one looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and try it. If you're following along, we are uh, at the select options and target stage of the instructions. Okay, so now that we've decided that we're gonna use this exploit, let's go ahead and load it up. So we're gonna say use uh, which one was it? Let's go ahead and just grab that whole line there since we don't need any more margin for error today. If I already typed in the use command, it will not run if I have it in there twice. So what we're doing when we type in this directory uh, path right here is we're just grabbing the path from here and entering it in, into our, uh, Metas, uh, our MSF console show. So now, as you can see, our directory has changed uh, inside the show. So we're use, actively using the exploit that we selected here through our search. Now, continuing on. There are uh, different ways to configure these exploits. They're not all just ready to go right out of the box. So let's go ahead and look at what's available to us. So we're gonna type in show options. Now, this is pretty cool because it'll show us all the different um, options that we can use to configure our exploit. Um, perhaps we want to, our, perhaps our server is uh, protected with a password um, and we want to enter it, we can actually enter that in and set that as one of our options. Um, the other nice thing about this is if you look at this required column, it shows us what parameters that we have to set in order to run a uh, successful exploit. Other ones might be just optional, like choosing a specific system shell. So, Let's go ahead and configure our exploit with the right parameters. As you can see, in this case, according to the, the instructions, we're only setting two parameters. So we're going to set our, our host parameter, which is short for remote hosts. And we're going to use IP address of 
our uh, our vulnerable Windows target machines. So we will enter 10, in my case, .128.0.2. And as you can see, our console shows us that the remote host value has been effectively set. Now, let's set our local host. In our case, that is going to be the uh, Metasploit, or that's going to be the Linux machine that we are attacking from. So we're going to enter set L host. In my case, the IP address for this machine, this Linux machine, is 10.128.0.3. Now, whatever your particular um, IP address is, is what you should put in after uh, the L host value. So now that we have our uh, remote host and our local host values configured, let's go ahead and run the exploit. To do that, all we need to do is type the word exploit and press enter. Now, Metasploit is going ahead for us and handling our uh, payload and uploading it to the vulnerable Windows server that we have pre-configured. Everything's going according to plan right now. And pretty soon, we're going to see a shell. We can tell so far that everything's going successfully. If you read this output uh, and things don't go well, it will tell you where the failures ha have happened. Yay. All right. So if you see here down at the bottom, we have what looks like a uh, window shell. And coincidentally, something I had never noticed before was that in this case, uh, it takes us right to the directory from which we started our uh, previous server session, which I think is sort of interesting. Uh, so let's go ahead and somewhere else here. Let's go up a couple directories. As you can see, all our commands are working. Let's look at what's inside the directory on our Windows machine. That's pretty cool. So if you look over here at our Windows machine, I'm now remotely viewing everything that's inside of this downloads folder from my uh, Linux attacker machine. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and try another command. Let's try the first command here in 301.1, which is task list. So I was able to run this successfully and see what processes were running um, and, uh, under Java. And this process right here is the process that's attached to my vulnerable server. So another thing you can do is some students last time had trouble getting this to work properly. In that case, you can try something else here. You can try task list. Mm. Oh, that's not correct. And now we're seeing all of, we're seeing everything here, it looks like. It's a lot of output. So if you can get the first command to work properly, that's going to be easier. 
So once again, let me run it the correct way because that's where the flag is. So we successfully completed our first exercise and gotten the first flag out of there. So you and want to save this video? Yes. Okay, I'll stop recording and put this.